Howdy everyone, Portia here with an Asian Magic video in today's video, it's time. It's time we're heading over to Grandma's Kitchen, we're going to check out the old spice rack, see what's hot, see what's not, you know the drill, and I can already sense it. I can already sense it, alright, those, those people, <laughs> I can feel it, <sighs> but Polcho, I used Hody once in Campaign 7, Heroic Mode, I really think you should be up in the spicy list, don't want to hear it, alright. This is my list. This is where I, this is what I'm cooking with. This is how I set up my kitchen. Oh, it's grandma's kitchen, but this is how it's going down in the house. All right. So, if you've got an inquiry, if you've got sure, leave a comment. Someone might read it and agree with it. But this is my my list. So, it's time. Let's go through why are the characters where they are. All right. Let's start at the bottom. Lemon herb, everyone's favorite. We've got Kashat Akrashat, the old Jag, uh, Grok, Roland. Uh, Gasa, Mirrodin, Rogar, Succubus. Yes, Succubus, Gatekeeper. Unfortunately, times are tough. Uh, Racer, Hound, Trish, Sabretooth, Sharazar, Silvermoon, Atiles, Aratar, Old Arakan Guard, and Steris. So, what are we looking at here? What are we looking at here? Okay, we've got obvious, the obvious ones. We've got Roland and Sharazar. Ain't no one using these characters. Okay, if you're using these characters, successfully in some type of content you're hacking or i don't know you have you're on to some secret meta that you're hiding from everyone and it's working but yeah we got the two green boys they are down here while their brothers and sisters are up here the reason for this is simply because of at the moment cradle of chaos i have successfully defeated many waves very successfully with the kobolds in their rate up Okay, but I've never used these two boys. These two boys, unfortunately, always make the slip. They never achieve anything for me. Same with these bugs. Okay, they're brothers and sisters. I mean, they've just fallen off. They're in no league with them. Okay, they're acknowledged. People know their names, um, but these are essentially the four... I guess we could include, yeah, there's, a, there's these are the disappointments in all the families, all right? So, yeah, we got Gasser. Maybe someone one time was like, oh, you know what? Um, librarian does some magic damage. We could probably use a Gasser. Never. I've found zero success. Mirrodin, I mean, his abilities seem cool. You look at him and you think, you know what? I could maybe use him somewhere. But, again, no success. Personally, I found no success. Rogar. <sighs> then we've got Succubus, okay? You're probably thinking, you know what? Succubus's skill set is not horrible. It's not. She has a three-character silence for two turns, I think it is, and it can be triggered to apply more damage. But in Raid, in Cradle of Chaos, I've never used her. I've never used her. There was actually a level in Cradle of Chaos where I found more success using Gatekeeper than I did Succubus. I do not know anywhere you're using this character. Even in the event rate, I find myself never touching this character at all. This is a character I feel like I could be proven wrong. Someone somewhere might say, you know what, in event raids, you can utilize her you could arguably push her up to mild this is probably one of the two characters on this list that could probably be jumped up from lemon and herb to mild um yeah it was a rough one i knew this is going to cause some controversy but she's down there gatekeeper eraser hound trish now her skill set not horrible again not horrible but i have not ever used her i've not ever seen anyone use her if people are using her by all means let me know let me know the successes and i will on my next list maybe bump her up but personally i'm just i know don't, don't know what you're achieving with this character compared to other dark elves okay it's just you got saber tooth again charizard silver moon nope a tiles aratar now aratar even Rogar, there is the argument that even there are in Lemon and Herb, 
Um, there is one very important use these two characters have, though. They are in Lemon and Herb. They're not going to serve you in any form of advancement in combat at all in the game. However, these two characters, off the top of my head, there are three more as well, are needed to complete the token challenge that comes once a month which is considered probably one of the most valuable challenges simply because it can if you get high enough give you gold tokens um that is important so at some point you will need to work on these heroes because you will need them but it other than that hurricane guard again not really using him not really using him, not using him. I'm not not really using him. I'm not using him. And same with Steris. I've tried so many times to use Steris. I really have because the fact that he works off Argon to get a guaranteed crit and then a, um, yeah, and then off his AOE uses his single target, which triggers the mark, which gives him guaranteed crit, and then use your AOE, which is five targets guaranteed crit. It seems cool. Yeah. Again, cannot find where to use him. So let me know. Okay, we'll move on to Mark. We'll try and speed this up because there's a lot to go through. Um, anything that stands out in here. The Arakan Undead have fallen a little bit. I wouldn't say they're not worth investing in. They do carry some weight in the event raids and they they do okay in Cradle of Chaos. Um, yeah. They're pretty accessible shards to get as well. You're not going to have a real difficult time getting these guys leveled up. The issue would come just with gear. Pretty easy characters to get. I mean, they're not breaking or making anything. They're useful. There's no waste in this. Uh, Pig Boy, honestly, since certain characters have come out, I don't even consider Pig Boy on the Beastman Squad anymore, in fairness. I mean, sometimes I do use him in Cradle of Chaos to get a one-shot kill on some very early waves, so he has a tiny bit of use. Damio, I mean, the whole High Elf faction. Again, useful in Raid, uh, Event Raid, um, and some cradle of chaos but i mean yes they're mild it might seem low but when you consider the other characters above them i mean they just get knocked down i mean you're comparing okay to more than okay uh you got siegfried who even though with the release of the knights has become a little more relevant he's still really weak i think he needs a passive added to him or his abilities buffed something I feel like there will be a time where he will be used. At the very moment, though, it's um, no one's making or breaking anything. Now, Rokan is down here. I mean, yeah, I guess you could put him up in hot. He's not a horrible character at all. I think people do use him as well. I just find that I, I find myself even using more Drake more than I do uh, Rokdan. Um, again, I would accept people saying, you know what, he should be up in hot. He could be in either one of these. I find myself using him the least. Therefore, I did throw him down. I mean, even in Invent Raids, I find myself using Mordrek. The only issue with these two characters is I think some people might have Rokdan leveled up more than Mordrek, and they will find themselves using him more in that situation. But once I got Mordrek up to the same level, I found, yeah, I was using Mordrek more. Uh, Balthazar, with the release of the majority of Renegades, not using him. Uh, some Wild Elves down here. Not horrible characters, not horrible at all. I just feel like, you know, they don't really stand out. If you've got all these characters standing in front of you, if this is The Bachelor and you're giving out roses for characters making it through the rounds, you're not giving roses to these characters. You're not giving roses to any of these characters, unfortunately. Uh, Kobold's only reason they're in Mild and not Lemon and Herb is because they absolutely slap. They absolutely slap in Cradles of Chaos. I love this team. This is my favorite Cradle of Chaos team because they just rip through everything. They're like, oh, Ooh, ooh, stop it, you boys. If if this was your buff permanently, if this was your stats in the game, you would dominate. You'd be the strongest faction. Obviously, they gave them ridiculous stats, so they're useful, but they are useful. Maybe this will change in the coming Cradle of Chaos season that changes the buff, but at the moment, yeah, I mean, they're not the, the worst. Same with these boys. They're in the vent raid doing okay. Uh, Schnicky Beaky, people using him in Cradle, but I mean, if you have to sub out a character for the Goblins to put someone else in, he's your go-to. You're chucking him ASAP, ASAP. He's out of there. Dwarves, 
I mean, yeah, they're not, they're not, and no one's turning their head. No one's giving them the double look these days. Uh, Danea, Swamp Killer, Bellara, again, for starters, for starting out players, these are easy to get characters, very effective, very good. Once you start pushing that late game, you will find that they um, they slide off pretty quickly. Uh, Arik and Shadow, and yeah. All right, now we're moving into hot. Nora is in here. The reason she is in here is because, yeah, her abilities are very good. No one knows how to use her yet. She's part of a faction that is limited in heroes, and there's not much more to say that. There is a, a very easy possibility she could be jumped, she could be dropped. We don't know. Rock, Dan, no. Dagan, Gadan, Gadan. Really good. Yeah. Just a solid healer. Then we've got Jean in hot again because she isn't out yet. Her kit on paper easily makes her probably the most effective and powerful light healer in the game. We're playing it safe though. We have not tested her. We have not seen her in battle. We have not seen how people are going to use her. She's in hot. If she works as good as her paper kit says, there is the easy chance she could be moved up to spicy. So don't look at this and think, oh, I'm not going to invest in her because she... Poultry said she's only hot. I want spicy. Don't. So guys, just let, let's see what happens, okay? Brynhild, this, the whole Knights team is in a state of, um, what's the place called? Um, pa, para, uh, oh, it's not Paradox. What's it called? The no man's net land, whatever they call it. It's a state of no one knows, okay? These characters have really nice abilities really nice abilities but they're part of a broken faction that has really weak characters and not fully released yet so we have no idea what direction this team is going goblins again no one knows how to use them except in cradle of chaos they do work they do real good work and there are some cradle uh event raids where they they are really really popping off the I just, they have potential as much as everyone hates them. We've got Volna and Farah here. Volna, people are finding some success with her. Personally, I haven't tested her properly, but I get a message every now and then saying, hey, Volna's doing pretty well here. I just haven't, yeah. Then we've got Dexar. Now, the reason Dexar is down here and not up here is because I find that people in Cradle of Chaos are mixing Dragonkin a lot. And when it comes to the mix, the old fruit tingle long island iced tea you gotta chuck out an ingredient to put something else in dexa is on the list to get kicked first that's the only reason she's in hot and not spicy is because these three are always the glue of a dragon king team and if you start mixing characters dexa gets kicked out dark elves not horrible not great then you know they're very niche uh, this is not really... It's Roina. I think Roina could honestly be pumped up to spicy. I think people find... Well, out of all the Dark Elves, Dark Elves, again, not horrible, but Roina is probably getting the most use out of everyone in the Dark Elf faction, even more than Azario these days. Since the release of Belladonna, Azario's use, I think, has just dropped a lot. Um, but yeah, Roina arguably could be moved up to spicy. I think a lot of people find success in using him in a team or even as a leader, especially in Cradle of Chaos. That ability to silence casters and healers, very powerful. You've got your wild elves. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, these two characters, or these three characters, they're, they're good. You can mix and match them with these guys. They're not spicy level anymore. You can say, yeah, sure, they could be because they're good for new players. But I mean, once you start getting to that late game, New players aren't using these guys. Um, they're good. They are good heroes. I'm not saying they're not. I'm not saying they're not. I just, yeah. Uh, more Drake again. I find myself using more Drake. A lot more than Rock Darn. Uh, yeah, Wilhelm is in here as well. Because I feel like Wilhelm had a really neat ability. And then Mordred came out. And it kind of dim the light a little on Wilhelm, but he still has a really nice kit, really good potential, uh, especially for future factions that bring out a lot of characters that are relying on faction, uh, faction synergy, whatever. He's, uh, he's, I think he will be able to find some use for him. Uh, we've got the full Druid team here. Now, again, this is, this is one team that no matter what tier list I do, this, this selection of heroes always irks someone the wrong way. They're like, oh no, these, these characters are way better than that. They are, 
Honestly, druids are going to help you in every content within the game. They are. They are useful. In fact, they are probably the definition of a balanced team. Compared to what else is in the game, the druids are really nice, okay? I just think they're hot. I don't think they're spicy. They're definitely not mild. If you're investing in druids and you're looking at this and you're like, oh, there's so many better things to invest in. Um, don't. Don't do that to yourself. These are really good characters. There are a lot of people that stand by druids. Druids are their favorite faction. Even though they know they're not the strongest, even though they're definitely not the weakest, people will swear by these characters and they have every right to. They are really good characters. Abaddon and Zart purely in hot because of the renegades you can chuck an abaddon leader in with the renegades and a zart in for a substitute healer these two characters do really well with the renegades really really well i have completed every and i can prove this to you every cradle of chaos region 3 end node with renegades and these two characters um i even use Zart over crowley People probably go the other way. I just find more use out of Crowley. Uh, Zart, sorry. Um, Crowley, definitely better. But yeah, if you've got these two characters and you've got the Renegades, a great team, great team. We've got the Children of the Forest. Again, this is the same thing as the Dragonkin. you got the Children of the Forest, which are really good characters, really good characters. But when it comes to mix and matching, you are dropping these characters and keeping these two. Uh, Seven Eyes, again, just great universal hero. Not seeing a lot of use lately, but still really good. And Ilios, I think Ilios, especially with the release of Renegades, has a little bit more use now. I uh, pumped him up to hot. Uh, all right, let's go up to spicy. I mean, these characters, they all speak for themselves. Renegades, not Renegades, sorry. Archons are up here for one reason and one reason only. Their time in the spotlight has should be dead. It should be dead, but no matter what, you get a team like Mordred come out who is ridiculously strong, the strongest we have seen in a long time, and you still find the Archons holding their own against these characters. Somehow, these ridiculous ancient relics of the past are holding their own still, and I think that definitely gives them the rank of spicy. They're just good. They're just... I mean, they're good now. These guys were... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Uh, you could say, yeah, they only belong in hot. I'm not going to argue with you. I just think that with the potential these characters have, even with Ilios chucked in there, to counter some of the strongest heroes we've ever seen and still hold their own. Uh, we've got the Beastmen. Beastmen, I think, in the last list I did were down in hot, but with the release of Librarian, these characters work ridiculously well. The ability they have to rack up his magic stacks and get him casting that bomb... This team, yeah, they have. I'm finding they have a lot more use now than they did in the previous few months. Um, so yeah, it's good to see them back in the spotlight. These two characters again, mix and matching them just to get them his bear mode going. I'm seeing a lot of use in that, especially in Cradle of Chaos. Uh, you normally find them mixed with these characters as well. So this is why these characters are up here again. They are just they just keep their own. They they. They're always finding a way to be relevant, and to me, that makes a character good. I mean, you find characters that are always keeping relevant somehow to be good investments. Vulcan, I think, is just a gem of a character. I think the support she offers, the damage she offers. Um, if, you, if this game had the ability to look at damage applied in battle, I have no doubt with a Vulcan on a team, she would be doing some of the most damage out of everyone just because she can support attack off everything as long as she's in that mode you have to hide her first she can't be in dark mode i believe yeah that yeah and then she has the potential to just straight up kill a target doesn't matter if they've got invincibility she gets through those deep uh those buffs uh you got these three orcs they are doing really really well still uh yeah and you can mix and match them into other teams I find people always trying to throw Chrome into whatever meta team they can. Arcane, again, sh solid leader. Uh, Lascari, yeah, these three are just the uh, trio. They just work real well. Ir Irizip, even with his uh, nerf, still really powerful. Again, gets thrown into just whatever team people can really use him in because of he's she. She's really, really fast. She can apply that damage reduction. 
in Cradle of Chaos, those some of those boss fights, you just need her. There's no way to beat the node without her. Um, so yeah, uh, then we got the Renegades and uh, Belladonna. I think Belladonna originally was in Ghost Pepper. I think Irizet and her have been just bumped down a little bit, just because again, there's just more powerful characters at the moment. And then you got these two, the magic duo, these two. I mean, if I knew nothing about the lore and just the, how these characters worked in synergy, I think they're lovers, okay? They're lovers. They're doing it every single night. They just can't get enough of each other. They work so well together. One just has the other's back and the other just has the other's back. They just just slap an R18 and, or triple X on these two bad boys and... All right, it's getting a bit saucy. Let's move up to Ghost Pepper. Crowley, not Crowley, uh, Mordred and Librarian. I think these characters are insanely good. I could drop Librarian down to here, but I love him. I think his kit is insanely powerful. His only downfall is his mirror being an 80% chance instead of a 100% chance. Um, but other than that, it's a really powerful uh, debuff to apply to the enemy. He has the ability to do tremendous amounts of damage, especially when mixed with the right characters. You can find him, especially in Cradle of Chaos, he wipes out enemies because you can stack that 10 stack up real quickly and he's blasting. He's absolutely blasting. And we've got Mordred. Anyone that's played the game for more than three days knows Mordred is just the bane of everyone's existence. So he is a character in the game with the most overpowered abilities crammed into one little skinny white male we've ever seen in the history of Age of Magic ever. Um, he can reduce initiative, increase your initiative, Meta, uh, polymorph remove leadership abilities remove passives he can lock down abilities he has ridiculous counter attack or support attack he's just he's got too much um but yeah a librarian good also but there you go that is my personal look on the tier list it's a 22 minute video already obviously with the more characters being released into the game uh, it's it's hard to do a tier list without trying to explain everything because like I said, there will be people that look at this and argue black and blue why characters should be moved up and down. I really, I don't care. If you've got your reasonings, I understand. You can do your own tier list. Um, feel free to do so. This is just my experience in the game. This is what I'm seeing with people's posts, what I'm seeing with people using Incredible of Chaos. This is what I'm seeing in Arena. This is just what I am seeing and my thought process behind it. That is the current tier list. Yeah. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, not doing my usual sign off, gonna change it up a little bit. I hope you have all had a wonderful year. I hope you've had a peaceful and safe year. I hope you've had a wonderful Christmas and I hope you go into the new year with love for each other and your family and your friends. And I wish you all nothing but the best. I'm always around on Discord. If you ever want to message me, feel free to do so. Sometimes I'm very busy, but I try to reply to everything I can. And yeah, you all take care of yourselves. Love you all. You are all amazing. All right, Polcho out.